Welcome back to Deep Dive with Ian. I'm Ian, and today we're going to take a look at a regulator. How does this thing actually work? I think for a lot of people, this is a, an expensive black box that you take into your local shop every so often to get serviced, but you would never want to pull this apart because who knows what you're going to break inside it. Well, I think it's useful and informative and interesting to know what's actually going on in here. So we're going to go ahead and take this one apart. Now before we go further, I do want to point out this is not intended to teach you how to become a maintenance technician. I am not a maintenance technician. Now that I'm done messing with this one, I am going to take it back into my local dive shop to get it rebalanced and make sure everything's set up correctly and properly lubricated. But we want to know how they work, so let's find out. This is an Aqualung Legend, nothing particularly special about this regulator, it happens to be my spare. So we're going to go ahead and use it for the video. In order to take this apart, we are going to start with this pin, which is locking the whole front assembly on. If I reach up in there, I can pop that pin. Alright, once I lift that pin up, I can rotate this front cap just a little bit. That allows it to come off. It's got a metal backing plate on there. We've got a bunch of pieces on the front here. Once we get through them, we can get to the really surprisingly simple operating mechanism. So this is a protective cap that acts to stay in front of the diaphragm here. So this is a diaphragm uh, based regulator. There are also piston operating, piston based regulators. We'll cover those later if folks are interested. This is a very common type of regulator. So a few more bits to come off here. We've got this plastic piece, which there we go. This holds the diaphragm uh, in place. That plastic ring sits down inside there. Then I can pull the diaphragm out. And this is where it gets really simple and cool. We've got this spring. What happens is when you pull air in, you're sucking air through the mouthpiece here, it's going to create a vacuum inside the body of the regulator, which is going to pull this diaphragm in. When that diaphragm goes in, it pushes this lever down. This lever opens a valve, which allows air from your low pressure hose to come in here. As long as this is down, air flows in. When you're done taking a breath and you stop pulling, that goes back up and cuts off the air. So really a pretty darn basic simple system. Now there are a few more parts here, so let's continue on. First off, this piece is just a plastic housing that I can slide to the side and then remove. This just acts to vent my exhaled air out to the sides to keep it away from the very front of my face. When I exhale, I should say, exhaling of course is going to first off push this, well it's going to push the diaphragm outward, so definitely isn't going to open the airflow. Instead it creates higher pressure inside the regulator here, that has to go somewhere, and it just goes out this very simple rubber or silicone uh, gasket. This seals when, you're pull, when it pulls a vacuum, uh, but when there's overpressure in that chamber it pushes out there. So bubbles come out here, your exhaled air comes out there, and then out through these little vents. All right, moving on. Actually, while we're here, let me mention as a side note this lever. This is specifically um, there so that you can set this to like dive mode or surface mode. Now what's clever is the way these are designed uh, the designs have evolved over the years, and the idea is to make it as easy as possible to breathe, because you are having to put pressure on this spring. So the designers have carefully designed the interior, essentially, flow of the regulator, so that once air starts coming in here because you're drawing a breath, it tends to actually create more vacuum. It tends to pull the diaphragm in so that it remains very easy for you to draw breath. The problem is when you get in a, a situation where the regulator can free flow, like if you get a little bit of vacuum in here for you know some somehow, like when you jump in the water, uh, this op can tend to open up, and once it opens, it's going to flow air through, and the design of the inside of the regulator 
causes it to keep flowing through, and that's a free-flowing regulator. Now the way that this lever solves the issue is, you can see, it's just a little plastic shield right here. It'll be a little easier to see when we take this apart. When I put this in surface mode, that shield covers the exit hole where the air comes in from your low pressure hose. It doesn't seal it, it just covers over it. That interrupts the flow dynamics inside the regulator, adds some turbulence in, and essentially it makes it a little bit harder to pull air, which means that uh, it's not going to free flow on you. Alright, anyway, uh, to continue here we're going to unscrew this locking piece. Then I'm going to push the valve down, and I can push this whole assembly. That's just a cap. This whole thing comes out. Right, push that lever down. We can pull off that piece itself. And then we're left with this. We have a little pin in here that's going to prevent me from unscrewing the back end. That pin is loose, it's held in place by this guy, so when the regulator's assembled that can't come out. We then have a hex screw at the back here. This sits in there and seals the end of this tube. And that is the valve that's actually going to allow you to get air. So, so we have a valve seat that's threaded in here, it's that piece with the cross slot. That takes a specialized tool to take out, so I'm going to leave it in there. And then this guy presses up against it. This is a, a soft material that seals up there. And then you'll notice the plastic element here has these two sort of fins on it. This lever has these two pads. They sit on those two fins, just like that. And then when the lever gets pressed down it actually pushes this backwards. Not much, just a little tiny bit against this, op this uh, return spring, but it pushes it back just enough to open, not very much, just enough for this to pull back. Air is coming in here from the low pressure hose. Once this opens air continues around it through this tube and it comes out this hole which drops right into the middle of your regulator, and it is that hole that this little plastic wing is going to either cover or not quite cover, like that. So that's how your surface mode uh, lever operates. At first of course this looks like a frightening number of small little fiddly bits, but I think once you understand how the regulator actually works it is First off, surprisingly simple, and secondly, it can give you a better level of confidence in using your equipment. It's not a mystery black box, this is a relatively simple mechanical device that has just a couple of moving parts in it, and now you understand how it works. Once again, like I said at the beginning, uh, don't try and do your own regulator maintenance unless you are certified and have a thorough understanding of what you're doing. While this is mechanically not very complicated, it is also extremely important that it works properly for you underwater, because if it doesn't you can have a very bad day. So get your regulators serviced by a professional technician at your local dive shop, but do also know what they're doing and how they work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this look. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive.